in many ways, the Southside Community Arts Center uh, is kind of my obsession. My name is Fahim G. I'm a sculptor, an artist, um, I guess in some regards a cultural worker, uh, a curator and arts administrator sometimes. Um, and I kind of see all those things as kind of one singular thing. I'm also uh, a former, well, I'm a current founder and director of the Floating Museum. And formerly I was executive director and curator of the Southside Community Arts Center, which is where we are today. Southside Community Arts Center opened its doors in 1941, 1940. And um, it was a part of the New Deal which was post uh, uh, kind of depression. So it was, the, the, the president at the time was really thinking about, and uh, the first lady, Eleanor Roosevelt, was thinking about culture as a way of kind of building, um, pulling us out of the depression, right? So you would come to these centers and they would, you can get a job teaching uh, or making kind of public works. Uh, murals, things like that. Many members coming through here, people like Gordon Parks, Charles White, Archibald Motley, uh, Margaret Burroughs, Carrie James Marshall, the Astor Gates, they've all kind of been through this space in some form or fashion, and they've left their marks. So the walls, it's a landmark space because in the 30s, when the center took over the building, um, um, they hired I, I, uh, uh, architects from IIT, uh, Illinois Institute of Technology, which were the Bauhaus. And um, their students and, and professors came and refurbished the interiors in kind of these cladded wooden walls. And the idea was a, about a didactic timeline of usage. So every artist, every poet, every child, every, you know, leaky roof that happened is all present at the same time. So we're literally sitting amongst the marks of history. So Charles White, Gordon Parks, they all hung their art here. And then when emerging artists will come through, young students having their first shows and things like that, uh, they got to put their kind of mark in the timeline. And it's continuing to build. It's a, it has an amazing collection of 300 works dating back to the 30s, uh, but it is also constantly showcasing emerging work. This is a home for me. Um, it's home to many. And home isn't necessarily about the form that it's in, it's about the people in it. So uh, in a project I did uh, with uh, Floyd Museum, we, we, we asked people to take pictures in their homes. And that's a very loaded term. Home can be nature, right? So some people were very literal. It's in my living room, this is my home. And others were like, well, I don't really like think that where I live is home. So my children's artwork is my home. My children are my home. My family's my home. So like really home is a very different thing. It's not necessarily grounded in a form all the time. It's more of a spirit of the thing. Um, so sometimes architecture can have a spirit to it. It can house it. It can be a vessel. But in order for it to be a vessel, there has to be something that goes in it. So like the thing that goes in it, you know, the envelope is on the outside. That can be hollowed out. Like we can move out of a building in a day and it's just a gutted out building. But home are the memories attached to a home are the, the, the notion of feeling safe, right? And that's really about the people in the home. And yeah, so I, I, we think a lot about that. Like, you know, like how do you build for that? How do you build a home? And the way you build a home is to actually to nurture a community. That's how you build a home, right? It's not the other way around.